<sighs> so good to be here. It's an evening live stream versus my regular morning transmissions. Ah, topic Kundalini awakening and accessing our deeper power. Our deeper power. So welcome whoever's going to be here with me. Okay. Closing this, closing this, Grace is in the back out. Okay, expand video, oh, okay, while I'm setting everything up, oh, okay, okay, I'm, I'll be here. Greetings, my dear community, this is Katarina Satori, I am live streaming from lovely California and I will be sharing this this video on all my other platforms you can find my work on YouTube on Instagram on Facebook and even on TikTok lately I've been having a lot of fun on TikTok and my work in the world is truly to be a messenger, a messenger for, um, a messenger of joy. My number one, <laughs> my number one message is joy is available even when it's really challenging, even when it feels like you are being tested left and right. Joy is just a choice away so that's my number one message i like to introduce myself as a joy ambassador and people tell me ask me what is it you do and i say i'm a joy ambassador i'm here to promote joy under all circumstances and i also walk the path of an educator and a teacher and a mentor and it's a true calling of my soul that I have been searching for ever since, ever since I could remember. But for about 10 years, I was on deep, deep search of my true self, of my true path, of my true soul assignment. And ultimately, all my life, I was looking for something that I'm going to give a voice on this transmission. I was looking for true power, true divine power. And I was always fascinated by big questions, big existential questions, such as who we are, why are we here and where are we going? And when I was learning a traditional history in school or in college, whoever is here with me, welcome dear ones. Let me know in the chat. Um, hi, Charlene, so good to see you. Yeah, so the traditional history of humanity never felt true, never felt like a full picture. And I wonder if you felt the same. Right when you were in school and and you were told that you came from a monkey, <laughs> it's even hilarious to even say that, right? Um, to me, it was very depressing history and a very depressing understanding of our background. And I wanted to dig and to find answers that would resonate at the level of my soul. And that led me on accelerated spiritual quest. And I studied many spiritual traditions, beginning with a traditional path of theology, traditional path of religion, um, that followed a path of uh, discovering Buddhism and that path that led me to shamanism. And when I, 
what I got to experience and understand shamanism, right? The nature spirituality that teaches you that everything has consciousness. Every tree holds consciousness and intelligence, every rock, every mountain, right? Every living creature is a part of this interconnected web. When I was guided to shamanism, I felt like I found something that was so familiar and so real and so authentic. But the path did not end there because once I discovered shamanism and all these all these new teachings that come from the traditions of the earth, I start connecting not only to the earth wisdom, but also start connecting to galactic wisdom. And I will never forget the moment where I heard the message of Pleiadians for the first time. And it was 2009 and I was in Rome, Italy. Was I in Rome? Yes, I was in Rome, Italy. And a dear soul brother of mine, my fellow galactic being, Joshua, sent me a video that was a code. It was a catalyst activation code for my consciousness. I remember it was so late at night, I opened the video and it was a message to family of light. And it was a transmission from the Pleiadian star guides. And the Pleiadian teachers, they are fifth dimensional beings, so they exist on a different plane of reality. And they have been benevolent teachers and the guides of humanity for a really, really, really long time. In a few minutes, I will share with you a brief, a brief um, story how the Pleiadians actually had a direct involvement in development of humanity. But before we go there, what I've heard in that message was like this full body remembrance, full body recognition. Yes, yes, yes. Every cell of my being was energized. You know, when you hear truth, truth has its own frequency. That's why truth doesn't need to be defended. Truth is only felt. And every single human being, every single being that exists on the planet has an inner barometer of truth. Yes, it may have been shut down and silenced and compressed, right? But when we step on the path of asking ourselves really big existential question, we actually navigate our path of awakening by following that inner barometer of truth, that inner voice of the soul that guides us, right? So that's how we discern what is true and what is for us from what is not for us, right? This deep, deep barometer of truth, we also call it our gut response, that inner mechanism within our belly, right? So that's how it was for me. 2009, I'm sitting in my lovely apartment in Rome where I was there for a month on the art tour. It was one of those trips that I took first time in my life. And I received... I received a call from a family of light through a portal called Pleiadian Transmission. And they were bringing these teachings about DNA. And if you study Pleiadian teachings or if you are just discovering them, you quickly will realize their main message is that we are frequency beings. And another huge part of their message is that our DNA has been disconnected from its full potential. So we are operating on only two strands of our DNA out of 12, 
12 helixes. And that brought me, you know, to the, to the science of DNA and epigenetics that talks about 98% of our DNA is what they call inactive DNA or junk DNA, right? So it, the DNA has been disconnected, right? Hi, Crystal. Good to see you, Villa. I'm talking about Pleiadians. That DNA has been disconnected by someone for a, some purpose, right? And there is this one pathway that is inside our body. Hi, Jacqueline. There's this one pathway inside our body that lays dormant. And when that channel reopens again, we begin to be on the path of accelerated awakening into our true power, into our true essence, right? So when I was receiving that transmission from the Pleiadian teachers and they were talking about DNA and they were talking about frequency and they were, uh, they were calling uh, to the family of light, the group of beings who chose to incarnate on the planet very strategically, knowing that the time will come and they will begin to remember who they are and why they are here and what is the purpose of every single challenge and test and difficulty and, and, and uh, everything that they have experienced was preparing them for their soul task. Every single thing, right? And out of many, uh, out of many expressions of our soul task, one of them is to be the frequency, right? To be the portal of consciousness. So that channel of power, the channel of power that I'm referring to, beloved, it's in ancient Hindu tradition um, is called Kundalini. Kundalini. And after I was apprenticing on a shamanic path and working with my beloved visionary plants, such as my divine teacher Ayahuasca that I have been working with for the last 15 years, and other different plants such as DMT and Bufo Toad and Psilocybin, all these visionary plants, I was thirsty and hungry for their teachings because I wanted to know the truth of the universe. I knew that I had to know it. It was not a question. I wanted to know it and I was willing to go through whatever it was required of me so I could understand the truth of the universe in a very direct way, in a very direct experience. So Kundalini Awakening came as a part of that curriculum and I was briefly mentioning it here and there, but this is the first live stream where I'm just gonna lay it all down for you here. <laughs> just gonna lay it all down, right? Uh, why? Why would it serve you, beloved soul? Because what I have found, Kundalini awakening happens in layers. There is no just one major Kundalini awakening. There is waves, right? There is waves. Depends on our physiology and how prepared is our body. We will receive a wave of Kundalini awakening. A Kundalini is this ancient divine power that spark of divinity that lays at the bottom of our spine it lays at the bottom of our spine and if you're looking at if you look at mystical art or visionary art you will see these artists they paint it usually in the form or shape of a snake of a serpent right and I actually have a serpent I can show you. I love the serpentine, serpentine art because when you look at symbols, symbols activate your consciousness. 
So this is a shape of Kundalini, right? So it, it begins to rise at the bottom of your spine all the way up, 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 awakening every single center of your power. You have seven of them within, seven different chakras. And those chakras begin to awaken and our reality begins to expand based on reconnection of our chakras and reconnection of our circuitry, inner circuitry. So we're going from living in a disconnected space to becoming progressively more and more connected. Everything is being done in... Um, under overseeing of our higher self, of our superconscious mind, of our higher self, right? Because our higher self is a sort of like our wise, eternal aspect of us that is waiting patiently for our human self to progressively become ready for the higher self to begin this deep communication and it's called the soul awakening or soul integration. So I do not encourage a rush the premature Kundalini awakening because it can really create um, imbalance in the system. So this is why we prepare the body, we prepare the consciousness, we prepare our awareness to meet that ancient power within, right? And there is a gentle way to do it and there is uh, a wise way to do it. But why would you want to awaken that power? Why would you want to access that level of intelligence? Well, because the, the times that we live right now, where so much rapid change that is happening, we are all being invited to awaken a much bigger aspect of ourselves, right? Our biggest curriculum is to awaken our multidimensional self. Awaken our great remembrance that we exist in multiple dimensions at once. And the more we connect to that realization, we begin to make different choices, we begin to trust our intuition, we begin to act on our inspiration, we begin to relate to each other in a different way, right? We begin to um, respond to the universe and to the quantum field in a completely different way. All of that comes with Kundalini awakening. You know, the topic of power is um, very personal for me because I grew up feeling, um, feeling sort of limited by my circumstances. Some of you have heard my story, I'll share it very briefly. But I grew up in a culture of, you know, that has been impacted by a regime or to, what is it called? Totalitar, total, totalitarism. I think that's how you call it in English. English is my second language. But I grew up, I was born during Soviet Union and I was born into a culture that had 80 years of spiritual deprivation. Imagine being born in a culture that has been cut off connection from spirit. Joanna, hi beloved. The connection from spirit been taken away from people and every spiritual minister or spiritual um, leader have been severely persecuted. They all went underground and the communist regime took reign. So a lot of people were killed and wiped out. And that creates a huge wound in the collective soul of a country. So every new soul that comes to a country and takes on a body you don't only take on a DNA of your parents, you also take on DNA of the country. Do you take a DNA of the culture? So when I was born, I chose to be born in Soviet Union. I remember from the early age having this thirst for spirit. I was so hungry to know God, to know anything bigger reality. And 
the funny thing is my family, my mom, uh, because I was raised by a single mother, my mom was not connected to spirit at all. You know, there was no spiritual books in the house. There were no rituals. There was zero spiritual connection. And by the power of the contrast, not knowing where to turn from my immediate environment, I began to search, right? I really began to search. And um, that's, that led me to asking a big question, what is power? And I remember as a child looking into my environment and not seeing any bright opportunities ahead of me. I remember the first connection that I've made is I got to develop my mind. I got to become really good at using my mind to find new opportunities. I got to become really good at, um, at uh, seeking opportunities to be of help and support of others. So this question of finding my power has been deeply alive for me since childhood. Little did I know that there is a mystical power that over that that is so much bigger than the power of the mind that the power of the will all of that is important but eventually eventually we are being guided to a mystical power and the mystical power that lays at the bottom of our spine and that's where i was guided by my soul by by my oversoul and when I was guided to the teachings of the sacred feminine, it was the beginning of a completely new spiral on my journey, completely new spiral. I recently completed a manuscript dedicated to the sacred feminine that I lovingly call Divine Mother because it's a sort of, it's not a sort of, it is a leap of consciousness to meet Divine Mother it's a leap of consciousness. It's a leap of the soul into the most mysterious part of the human soul, of the journey. And when I was guided to study the ancient wisdom teachings, because I wanted to understand the true history of humanity, I wanted to understand what really happened pre history, pre-recorded history. To access those, that kind of information, you go beyond what is written. You go beyond what is, you can access on a sort of a human plan. It looks distorted. Oh no, I'm going to take a pause and check on my, on my phone. Hold on. Hold on, beloveds. Let's see if we have a clear image here. Oh, you know what? I'm, I know what to do, like this. Yeah, let's see if this works. Oh, I think this is better. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I think this is better. You know, I am utilizing, um, I am utilizing the, what is it called? Facebook Live. And it often very reliable source of channeling for me. But sometimes, you know, sometimes the technology gives us this opportunities to be patient. Yeah, I'm a, I look a little stretched. I look a little stretched right on this video. <laughs> I'm going to just roll with it. But I wanted to share with you uh, what happened when I went through uh, my Kundalini awakening. It was a progressive journey, beloveds. The very first door to my personal Kundalini awakening was actually through sexuality. And that, um, that brought me a memory of what I was learning through Pleiadian teachers. And they describe sexuality as one of the ways you can spark your DNA into awakening, right? Because when you engage in sexuality, uh, in preferably in a very conscious way with somebody who honors you, right? 
my path did not start with only engaging with my sexuality with somebody who honors me right when i was awakening my wild self and my you know my relationship with my sexuality i was experimenting with this with this inner dragon within right because nobody really gives you a manual of how to harness your sexuality how to consciously engage with it you just kind of get into experience and you learn what feels good what doesn't feel good you know and I remember um, tracking that with some people that I engage sexually I couldn't get off the energy of me for days I was like what is happening right I didn't have the language to understand that as a feminine you receive people's energy into your body right but I was very curious to what was happening because the more I would engage in a relationship with my sexuality the more I would receive this spontaneous remembrance and then learning from Pleiadian teachers uh, who are teachers about frequency and they would use this metaphor that sacred sexuality or sexuality in general is a sort of a spark it's a spark for your dna it sparks and awakens your inner fire and then they would guide you and they would say you know be mindful who you engage with make sure it's uh it is done from the level of self-respect and love and uh and authenticity so that was the first doorway right beside working with visionary plants that's a huge awakening of your kundalini then there was a path of uh, figuring out that sexuality sparks my dna into remembrance and then all these past life memories were coming online and I began tracking them, I began remembering them, I began recording them in my journey, in my journal. And one of the big one was on my ayahuasca journey, where this, I will never forget this visual of actually being able to see into my energy body and watching this ancient serpentine energy rising from the bottom of my spine awakening every single chakra and meeting right here inside my third eye and I held the prayer you know during that ceremony I held the prayer and I said spirit guides or the masters of light who work with me on all these higher dimensions show me my earliest lives because if I am ready to see it will you show me my earliest lives and help me remember and help me code it in every part of my being so I do not forget who I am and why I am here and I want to share this with you my dear ones because I am not the only one who remembers her past life there is millions of us who are feeling and connecting to these ancient memories millions of us and maybe my share will help you feel normal that actually remembering your past life is a normal experience it's not crazy and it's not woo 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 woo, -woo, -woo right it's a normal evolutionarily experience that means your consciousness is awakening itself to multi-dimensionality is my video still stretched yeah it's a little stretched but we're just gonna roll with it I am not stopping right now for a stretched video <laughs> I, mean, I will I will check your comments here hi darling it looks distorted right yeah it's a little stretched but you know it's okay as long as it's clear and the first memory that came up is the memory of Lemuria and in January of this year I hosted a Lemurian healing I, I 
just went for it. I was like, somebody in my, in my social media will think I completely lost it, but I'm okay with that because these Lemurian energy is coming through and they want to be shared. They want to be shared to empower more people to connect with the sacred feminine, to connect with the cosmic womb, right? So the Lemurian teachings came first. And when I connected to that plane of reality that is exist, that still exists, that exists on the buddhic plane. So Lemurian consciousness exists on etheric planes. It doesn't exist in the physical, but it, it exists in a non-physical that we can access through our consciousness. Our consciousness can reach any point in the universe. Our physical body cannot do that, but our consciousness can. So when we access these other dimensional states, we can attune to them and stream information through Akashic records. So Lemurian civilizations were the very, very first civilization on our planet. And it was seeded, directly seeded by the Pleiadian star mothers, by the seven sisters. They also, in ancient Egyptian uh, tradition, they called seven Hathors, right? Seven sisters, seven beings, seven divine females. And then the next civilization after Lemuria was the civilization of Atlantis. So Atlantis was actually a colony of Lemuria. So imagine that Lemuria was like a civilization of the wise celestial grandmothers, right? The keepers of the original flame, the original Garden of Eden. And the next civilization was the Atlantean one, which was a global, global empire. It grew to a global empire over, over many, many cycles of time. And these are the memories that just flooded my being through that wave of Kundalini awakening. And it was so powerful. I remember it took me it took me a while to return to the ordinary state of consciousness but i came back after that journey and i channeled this piece of writing that was based on the title on 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 basically a sentence that i heard during that journey it was one sentence that i heard again and again and again, a sort of like a code, like a light code. So I anchor it and never forget. And the code was, I am, Lemu I am an Atlantean mind, Lemurian soul. I am a Lemurian soul and Atlantean mind. I'm Atlantean mind, Lemurian soul. And when I came, came home, I returned home, I actually had something custom made for me I engraved that phrase on um, on a on this kaleidoscope that I that I found on Etsy and you know as a child I really loved kaleidoscopes something magical when you look at the kaleidoscope and you see all these fractals and possibilities and it really reminded me you know, on the spiritual dimensions of life, our life is like that. You know, it's a fractal of possibilities. There's all these realities and dimensions that we can access through our consciousness. And the reason I wanted to engrave that memory is because the veil of forgetting is so strong. You know, you have this potent, life-altering mystical experiences that forever alter you but the time passes and it becomes a memory and it begins to fade away and fade away and fade away and the veil of forgetting that we call Maya the great veil of forgetting takes hold of your mind of your consciousness so I surround myself with symbols as a way of remembrance 
And one of the symbols that I wanted to show you today is the symbol that comes from Atlantis. This is an Atlantean symbol and it's an Ankh. You know, I remember the first time I saw an Ankh and I saw it and I said, I know this. I don't know from where, but I know this. And I reached out to a person who was making this and I said, tell me more about this, this tool because I know it from the level of the soul. And that was right at the time where I was reconnecting to ancient Egyptian past lives and all these memories of these great beings who were taught directly by the teachers of Atlantis, right? Such as uh, these, these great, great uh, beings who became deified in ancient Egypt, such as the great Auset, Isis, great Thoth or Jehuti, right? Anubis and Osiris and all these beings who were, who were the beings from the Atlantean civilization. Oh, ancient memories, ancient memories. So when we are not afraid to remember, we will begin to remember. You know, I came with to this incarnation knowing that I choose to remember the fullness of who I am and why I'm here. And part of my soul mission is to help other people to remember because the more we remember, the more we able to see this three-dimensional reality through, through our ancient eyes. We're able to navigate with the lucidity of mind. We're able to remember our soul task. We're able to stream the gifts and the powers and our talents from all the parallel incarnations that we have developed before. And this lifetime, the reason why this lifetime is so unique, it's a point of convergence. It's a point of opportunity for us to live in our true remembrance. So Kundalini awakening and awakening to divine feminine power is awakening to the fullness of your potential. It's awakening to the depths of your inner wisdom. It's awakening to your immortality, right? The codes of immortality that lays within your body, within your DNA. It's a beautiful, beautiful process. And again, there is no need to push, there is no need to force that awakening. There is only invitation to allow and to invite it in and to open your heart and to open your body to a greater mystery, right? So when that Kundalini awakens in you, not only your true mystical gifts and your true spiritual talents awaken, you also begin to engage in a very powerful contemplation, and it's a contemplation on death. Death becomes um, a curiosity topic for you, not a taboo, not a topic that you avoid looking at while if you avoid looking at the topic of death, you're choosing to be unprepared to meet that great experience. You begin to be curious. You begin to study ancient mystery teachings that were always talking about awakening our consciousness to our immortality, that we are immortal as spirit. And death is a process of changing a costume changing an experience, walking into a new reality. Somebody is messaging me. I wonder who that is. Yeah. Hi, dear ones. Here I am still with you. Yeah, even if my video is a little distorted, as long as you can hear me okay, it's worth it, right? I'm opening a stream of these transmissions because the more we remember who we are, the more we remember that the power to create, the power to envision, the power to rebirth ourselves anew 
over and over and over again has always been within has always been within and when we reconnect our circuitry it's always been about that reconnection where we awaken our dna we are awaken and heal our dna there's a process of healing that takes place right the process of healing our karma working through our karma working through the blockages working through the fears the more we begin to experience reality as we always knew we could as a true awakened and empowered soul so kundalini for me is also a source of regeneration you know when when that kundalini awakens in us progressively in waves right in 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 these mystical ways it's a sort of like a fountain fountain of longevity fountain of inspiration fountain of your inner channel begins to open and that is exciting that is exciting you know that level of aliveness that level of magnetism that level of your vision that opens up for you so this is yeah the <laughs> luba says <laughs> i'm i'm just watching i'm just watching the comments so these are the topics that i want to give a voice to because when we reconnect to the true history the true prehistory pre-recorded origins of humanity we begin to connect to hmm, the true nobility of what it what it truly means to be human why do angels weep when they watch our human experience because angels and archangels they can observe us they observe us in awe they observe but they cannot participate in physicality they cannot experience the wonder of being human they cannot experience the wonder and ecstasy of sexual bliss the beauty and sweetness of a of a hug of a friend the wonder of a newborn baby the the absolute mystery of somebody going through the portal of death into another life all the spirit guides that you work with that i work with all the beings from the invisible field they can only observe us they cannot directly participate in our human experience they can guide us telepathically conversing with us streaming the information of inspiration for humanity right they cannot do the work for us they cannot awaken our kundalini for us they cannot heal our dna for us only we have that power and that is something to value my dear ones that is something to truly treasure that every single one of us here because we choose to be here because we were standing in line to incarnate for this particular moment a moment of convergence a moment of remembering ourselves on multi-dimensional level a moment of connection to these star guides i had a conversation with actarians and other star teachers that i work with i love them so much you know actarians to me feel Hmm. they feel very angelic you know they are there are many different dimensions of Arcturian teachers they go from uh, anywhere from fifth dimensional to 11 dimensional Arcturians so the higher they are on the dimensional scale the more angelic they become right they the more until they become you know a sort of like a rays of light not having any uh, humanoid form so I had a conversation with Actarians telepathically in my healing room and these are the messages that I keep receiving you know they ask me or they remind me 
they say remind your community that it's all about reconnecting the strands of our DNA, reconnecting our circuitry, and ultimately remembering that we are part of the whole. We are always supported by the net, by the web of life. There's two types of people right now on the planet. To say it really, really simple. There's people who are disconnected from the web of life, and that's a frightening experience because everything that's happening in the world is pushing them to awaken and to return to connection. So there is this part of population that are disconnected and they are going through their dark nights of the ego, dark nights of the soul, different experiences that are designed by their higher self to help them come back to connection. And there is another part of population that are connected and progressively become more and more aware of a much bigger reality. Wow, we live in exciting times. So if you are my peer, if you are, if you feel that you are part of the family of light, if you are here to help people or to inspire or to be the embodiment of what you deeply, deeply believe, Remember, my dear one, our biggest task is to be that portal of connection, right? To inspire others to reconnect to this big web of life. And we do this in our unique way, right, beloveds? We are doing this in our unique way. Most powerful way to help somebody connect is through your unconditional presence, through your field, through your essence. Now, it was so powerful when I was in Peru this year. I love Peru so much. I, every time I'm there, I have these thoughts of actually moving there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am picking up one of my um, future timelines. You know, I see like my elderly years there when I'm 70 years old or 80. I see a life where I live peacefully in a small village. <laughs> you know, progressively desiring more simplicity and more peacefulness and more village life. But when I am there, I, I receive all these Atlantean memories and all these Atlantean codes and all these, um, all these reminders, reminders, reminders of who we truly are. And I come back to California because I am here, I am specifically placed here by my higher self for a reason, uh, just like you are. I deeply believe from the, from the essence of deep, deep sense of knowing that we are strategically placed as a family of light, we're strategically placed exactly where we are to be the transmitter of frequency. Anything we do in the external reality, right, is a bonus, but our, our number one task is to be the keeper of frequency, to be that emanator of um, harmonious, coherent vibration. Every time you come into harmony, into coherence, you actually heal the world. I know there are so many healers in my community who are deeply passionate about healing the world, about healing the soul of the world. And what I'm here to offer as a gentle reminder every time you come into coherence, into peacefulness, into deep, deep resonance, you heal the world. And every time you go into samadhi, that inner union of your inner and your outer entire world is being uplifted through your inner alignment. This is how powerful we are. This is how significant our contribution, our vibration is. And this is why Kundalini awakening is a jewel of spiritual path. A jewel of spiritual path. 
On this note, my dear ones, I am going to close down this stretched video. <laughs> and maybe next time I'm going to uh, live stream on, on uh, what is it called, Zoom. But I'm really grateful to be here with you and to share these moments of connection and to share with you, to share with you these, these um, stories that remembering your past life is actually a normal experience. It's not crazy. It's normal. Remembering the prehistory of humanity is normal. It's actually a sign of your consciousness being ready to receive these memories because when we remember who we are, we reclaim our confidence in where we're going and why we're here. But if we're still thinking that we came from monkeys randomly existing on this universe, ah, that's a frightening, frightening future, if you ask me. Frightening future. We have star seed DNA, we have these memories. We have these connections and communications with highly advanced civilizations in this multi-multi-universe. And all it takes is an openness of uh, our heart because the heart is the source of fifth dimensional connection. All it takes is that deep sense of willingness to remember and curiosity and saying, wow, what is my true potential if I truly, truly choose my full awakening? Wow. On that note, this to me is a Shakti awakening, the goddess awakening within us. You know, when I talk about the goddess and divine mother, she has never been outside of us. She has always been within us. You know, I just finished this manuscript on divine uh, mother. And one of the messages that came through, it's a 100% channeled book. One of the messages was the voice of Divine Mother that says, you know that silent presence you felt as a child? Especially in those dark moments where you thought you were alone and you were not seen by your parents and you were not really cared for. And you felt alone. But in those moments of deep loneliness, you felt a silent presence watching over you. Did you not? Did you not feel that silent presence? Yes, you did. It was my presence, said Divine Mother, because I have always been in your body. I have always been in your heart. I have always been in every cell of your body. That's the voice of the goddess. The message of the goddess, the message of the sacred feminine that is flooding our planet. You know, our only liberation, the only liberation that I see for our planet is the grace of the sacred feminine. That is the only liberation for us humans. So the sacred feminine that is flooding as the spirit of grace, lifting us up in the moment of darkness, lifting us up when we are on our knees, because that's the time when we are humble and receptive to really hear the truth and to awaken to our true, true essence. So the sacred feminine, the teachings of the sacred feminine flooding humanity. And out of many, many messengers who are hearing her call, what I feel inspired to share is that the goddess is within independent of the gender she is been within and the doorway and the portal to her experiencing is kundalini is that shakti divine power i will say more soon but for now beloveds thank you so much for receiving this share um in the way that it came through in a distorted stretched out video it's all good I am really grateful to be here with you. You know, last few months of this year has been so dynamic, so dynamic. 
and I really crave to to be more in a live video format with you. Uh, and I'm glad I'm, I um, I have that space now to share and to be and to exchange this discoveries on the path. Thank you for receiving this. I love you. Be blessed. May the spirit of grace watch over you. May you trust the current of Shakti that is moving through your life. The, may you trust this deep thirst for truth. May you allow your multidimensionality to fully come online. May all of us remember who we are so we walk through this threshold that humanity is standing on with a sense of nobility because we are ready to remember who we truly are and our true origin starting from Lemuria.